YouTube, this is the Hosey Man. Um, today I'm going to be doing an edit detailed, in-depth review of the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One and try and answer all your questions, leaving no stone unturned. I'm going to be showing you the consoles in action as well, explaining the features rather than just talking about them. I'm going to let you see how they both function and uh, my opinion on them um, as well. Try and be as non-biased as I can because I was a Sony person, I still sort of am. I love my PlayStation 3, got my PlayStation 4, hated the Xbox right from the beginning, didn't like the 360. Things have changed a wee bit and I'm going to explain why, so let's begin. And as you can see guys, there's the PlayStation 4 just above the Xbox One. Size wise, it's not a big difference, it's not really that big a difference at all. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't really bother me in regards to looks that much. I think they both look quite nice together. Um, but we're not going to talk about looks really. Uh, you guys can make your own judgments on that. Um, this is about the performance. And the what I'll do is I'll start with a cold boot up of each console. User interface, the specs, the pros and cons of each. My preferences um, and my feedback from an owner's opinion. Um, and I'll start off with the Xbox One, so I'll just put that up right now, and we'll see how long that takes. As the light comes on. Um, there you guys. Signing in for the Xbox One can be a little bit of a pest sometimes. Regards to it not recognising you, it always says we'll recognise you better next time. It doesn't. It sometimes picks you up instantaneously, and a lot of times it just doesn't. Now I'm wearing a hat, it could be that. These three wee dots, as you can see here, um, that's a new thing from a recent update. I guess a lot of people were complaining and they thought the Xbox was taking so long, it was maybe frozen or something. But it's not that bad. If you're sitting staring at it, it feels a while. But you turn it on, you, you know, sit, get yourself sit, sit, sat down, it's fine. Now that's recognised me and I haven't even picked up the pad, so that's good. Um, now, um, user interface for this, it looks messy. A lot of people are moaning about it. No customization. I personally think it's it's fine. I think it's dead easy because I use my voice commands for finding anything I want. Um, and obviously I've got my pins, stuff that I use the most of the time. Um, you know, I know what I mean. Yeah, I mean you've got everything you need to do on the left, the middle or the right, it's quite easy to find and you can customise it to the degree where you can basically pick something you really need. Your friends is always there, your main thing you've last used or you're using currently, you've minimised is there. These things are just things you've opened recently. Um, that always seems to be there and that is there, so I guess these three things never move. Um, you pin what you want to there, very simple. Um, don't know why I've got these three demos here or games there, but anyway, your store and everything you need is on the right, and also, you know, dead easy to navigate. And if you get lost, if it's like into the settings or anything like that, it's either down the bottom if you've last used it, you can pin it or you can just ask voice commands to take you there. Very simple, very straightforward, no hassles. Now, let's go on to the PlayStation 4 boot up. Now with the PlayStation you get a wee beep, a notification that's turned on as well as the light. Xbox doesn't make anything unless you actually touch the button with your finger. So, there we go, that's the PlayStation 4 on. I think it takes just under, or half the time, or just over half the time, sorry. User interface for the PlayStation 4, very straightforward. A lot of people are moaning about the, the non-customization here as well because PlayStation 3 had a bit of customization. But you've still got your XMB type thing. You can't really scroll down for options. Everything in your, it just goes in one. Basically the more stuff you have, the longer this bar comes. Now this be library thing, um, if you go into it. Supposed to let you organize stuff, but it just but it's, by the time you've scrolled along to it, you've already found what you're looking for. I don't get it, personally. But, um, and that's it. Really straightforward. 
not a lot of apps for the PlayStation. That's about it. Those there for the UK version anyway. Um, that's about it. The Xbox One has probably about three or four times more apps than that, and there's a lot more coming. Um, the regards to social stuff, um, I don't like it either. PlayStation, you basically go there, which that looks to me as if that would be the PlayStation Store, that logo, but it's not. And it tells you your recent activity from all your peop your friends. They've all been playing games. Big wow, we've all, yeah, good, great. And what? I can't comment, I can't share, I can't see what they've been doing, there's no videos. It just tells me they've played games or they've got an achievement. Occasionally there's a wee advert somewhere from the PlayStation Store. Um, but it's pretty much useless, personally. Um, so we'll go back over to the Xbox One. And... We'll talk about specs for both consoles, uh, the pros and cons of each. Now, try and get as much information in there as I can in here. Um, both consoles have basically got an 8 core processor, which we all know, x86. Um, they both have 8 gigabytes of DDR RAM. Now, the, the advantage the PlayStation has is it's GDDR5, um, but it, it's sort of slightly different memory. Um, I'm not a hundred percent in that, so I'm not going to quote it. But they're both very similar specs. There, um, both have 500 gig hard drives to start with. Now, the PlayStation 4, you can change that hard drive. You can take the hard drive out, put a new one in. It doesn't void the warranty, but you can't connect an external at the moment, nor a USB pen, anything like that. The Xbox One, however, you cannot change the internal hard drive, but on the flip side, you can you can connect an external hard drive. And just so that you're aware, there's two USB pens on the PS4, and there's two on the Xbox One on the back, and one on the side. I don't know if there's enough light here for you to see it, but it's just in there. Now that's handy for plugging in an external hard drive. Um, it has to be over 256 meg, and has to be USB 3. Um, which isn't an issue these days. Be aware if you do plug in an external hard drive to the Xbox One, it will tell for the Xbox to act as if it's an actual Xbox hard drive. It won't be allowed for a media streaming thing. Um, things have slightly changed now as a recent update, which is the Media Player app, which is right there. That's a preview version, it's not the full version yet, and it only allows multimedia via USB. Um, so you may get an option if you plug in a hard drive as of current times. Um, now, our specs are very simple. They're both of you uh, HDMI ports, um, both get outs. The Xbox One has an HDMI in for the, your cable box, your Sky or whatever. Um, and they both get your, you know, the rest of the specs are pretty much the same. There's not much huge difference. Control pad. Xbox One pad, funny enough it is very similar to the 360, yet I hated the 360 pad. I didn't like the thumbsticks, I felt they were slippery, I didn't like the D-pad, um, I didn't like any of the trigger buttons at all, and obviously that big battery pack sticking out. I also hated the battery life on the Xbox 360. You literally, for my personal experience with my friends, would be playing, a few hours in, batteries are dying, and the wee circle would just spin and spin, but you don't actually know, are these dead, are they not dead? Um, well, you, you, you do, you'd have to go to the shops and change batteries, or you'd have to open control, remote controls and swap batteries. It was, an, it was a hassle. PlayStation 3 pad, however, had a ridiculously long-lasting life span. It was great. Internal battery, plug your cable in once every now and again, and it would charge. Now the flip thing is, I love, I love this pad. The thumbsticks are brown. I don't know if you'll be able to see the texture. If you can't, look at some photos online. Great bits of, um, great feel to them. The rumble pad inside the triggers is brilliant. The battery life, I'm still using double A's in there. And, and they've also got this flat pack here as well. It's fantastic. I've only changed the batteries once and I've been playing this for months. I haven't played a lot as, as solid as a lot of you guys probably will because I've only got Titanfall um, a couple of demos, but I do play these games quite a lot, um, 
and also I use my Xbox One more than I use my PlayStation. I'll cover that shortly. Um, the PlayStation 4 controller, you know, it's a wee bit different for the PS3 in regards to the, the handles. Thumbsticks are supposed to be improved. I don't like them because this bit here is very slippery and I've seen other people starting to wear away already. The internal speaker, really good actually. Um, useful in some quite a few games like Killzone and uh, Resogun, even The Last of Us Remastered. The touchpad, very similar as well. It's been used in a few games, quite good. Um, the triggers are very good. I'm not really... The rumble pack, I'm sort of not really noticing that much. The options button, I feel, is a wee bit kind of a funny place to get to. Sometimes, like, sometimes I want to come over here. Share button, I never use, personally. Um, uh, the mic thing, you know, that's pretty cool. The light bar is annoying. You can That's it dimmed. You can dim this through the settings. I can't get it any dimmer than that. And I can't turn it off. No one can. It's annoying because... It wastes your battery, that's basically why the battery life in this is ridiculous, it's crap, really really not good. Um, I get maybe 2 or 3 hours out of this, and I'm not joking, it's as bad as a Wii U. Um, you can buy decals online that will completely cover, uh, perfectly shaped for the light bar that can block out the light if it's annoying for you, but I'd, like, I'd prefer if Sony actually responded to what the customers want. And that's the next topic. Feedback. Um, the the PlayStation Four or Sony are they're not listening to their, their fans. They've been promising the world since E three that we're going to do this, this, that, the other, lots of stuff. They're not doing any of it at all. Um, they just seem to be focusing on social stuff, and I don't even know what social stuff they're talking about. Because I'm every time I turn my PlayStation on, it, it hasn't changed. It doesn't look more social. Um, there's a lot of features that people need. For instance, PlayStation 3, I love it, it does everything. It plays CDs, MP3s, it plays pretty much most video codecs off a USB or DLLA. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically just streaming content from a media server, your laptop, or an NES or NAS hard drive, which I have. I've got a 2 terabyte NAS drive. I can connect it to my PS3, cannot do it with my PlayStation 4. Um, I can play CDs on this, cannot play CDs on my Xbox, uh, PlayStation 4, cannot watch video files off USB, I can't do that, so I cannot do that on this, but I can do it on that, um, you know, just, I can, when this first came out, I could watch 3D Blu-rays on the PlayStation 3, but couldn't watch 3D Blu-rays on that, in fact, the Blu-ray player when it first came out on this was twice as long to load a disc than the PlayStation 3, and that's not a joke. Um, now things have changed, there's been an update, PlayStation 4 now allows you to play 3D Blu-rays. Great, and obviously it's a wee bit quicker at loading discs now. But the only reason they put that update in there, regards to thousands of people asking for it, as well as DNLA, MP3 playback, video file playback, media server, all that stuff, they just ignored them. The only reason they put 3D Blu-ray in there is because the Xbox One put the Blu-ray player in first. And they basically responded. It was literally within a few weeks, right after the Xbox One started having that, that Sony had it on theirs. It's not because their fans asked for it, because it's competition. And that's annoying as well, because this system is new tech, it's new specs, it's meant to be next gen, and it does way, way less than that. You can play games on it, brilliant. You can watch Netflix on it, which is, you know, everything watches Netflix these days. You can go on the web if you want. Uh, that's about it. You can watch Blu-rays and that's about it. The Xbox One, however, Microsoft made a big fuck-up, and we all know that, regarding the DRM. But they have been listening to their fans, and they've been actually doing really well. I mean, I got this six months after launch, when I got the PlayStation 4 at launch, and I'm going to be honest, I love my Xbox One. I'm really slowly disliking this thing, this PlayStation 4, because it just seems to do nothing. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a great games machine, that's what it's meant to be. But I like have, as you can see, I've got a home cinema set up there, I've got 7.1 surround sound, I've got my amp. I like being able to control all my movies, my music, and everything through my AV receiver. And Xbox One's a great complement for that. PlayStation 4 isn't. Um, anyway... 
the test box one you can play CDs on it, you can do DNLA, you can um and I'll show you I'll show you something in regards to that in a second. Um I can watch 3D Blu-rays on it obviously. I can listen to I can pretty much do pretty much what the to keep it short, the PlayStation 3 does, the Xbox One does as well, and there's a lot of other stuff as well, like your social media stuff. It's got the YouTube app, PlayStation 4 doesn't. It's got Skype, it doesn't. Uh, the camera, by the way, is fantastic. I love it. Um, I know there's not a lot of stuff that use it, games, for the camera. The voice commands are great. The Skype is great. The camera lens inside actually follows your face. No joke. If I can stand up and walk around the room, it follows you. Um, some of you will experience that, it's great. It means you don't have to sit there idle in front of the thing and when you're talking to someone in Skype. Um, you can even control Skype through your voice by selecting Skype. You can even control the contacts as well by just mentioning contact one, two, three, four. You can even say call, it'll do all that. You can end the call with your voice. It's really good. Um, some games do use it as well, like Zumba, which I've never played, but it's apparently very good for user into your fitness. Uh, Zoo Tycoon, actually quite a good demo, you should try it with the game, where you can do a lot of hand gestures, voice commands, it, it does, it works quite well. PlayStation Camera doesn't really do anything, unfortunately, I, I think people just use it for uploading games or uploading themselves, playing games or doing reviews, things like that. It can be useful for that, but Xbox is going to do that anyway. Um, don't know any games other than the playroom, which I think is just a, a novelty, it's a gimmick that gets people entertained for about 5-10 minutes and then that's it. So I didn't get the PlayStation camera, so I can't review that, but I wouldn't get it if I were you guys, personally. I don't think it's a, it's, it's a wasted piece of tech and, and money now as well. Um, So yeah, so anyway, I was going to quickly show you the couple of things with the Xbox, the YouTube app. Um, it's very good. It doesn't have adverts, things like that on it that you do get when you're on your laptop. I kind of thing. I don't have to set it that way. It just does it. You've got all your stuff on the left. You know your subscriptions, all your stuff. Um, search bar. You can even use Siri to search for stuff. It's not actual Siri. It's like that. It's through Bing. The web browser is really good as well. And you've got, you know. Your YouTube app's the YouTube app. The point I'm making is the PlayStation 4 doesn't have the YouTube app at all. Um, other wee thing as well, like every time Xbox does an update, you get something like this up here under the feature section which tells you what the app has. Rather than just you reading it before you agree to it, installing an update like Sony does, it doesn't just tell you, it shows you. And it shows you in a wee video file of all the new things that are been put on your Xbox as well as the things that are coming, um, which is quite good. Um, the friends section is like the 360, you've got your avatar which you can customise, um, I won't go into that, but it's got a more social thing, it's got a very Facebook feel to it, you can like comments, you can, you can post uh, your view, just like a post on Facebook, you can share videos, other people's videos, achievements they've got, everything you can do, you can interact with, pretty much the same as Facebook. I won't go into it because, you know, I'm not going to give away all the names of my friends on Facebook, eh, sorry, <laughs> on Xbox Live. But it's got a lot of things as well improved, and that's just of a recent update. PlayStation, your friends, you can talk to them online, but you can't really do anything like, you can, there's supposed to be stuff that you can do coming, where you can share the videos and do comments or stuff, but it's not there yet. Um, the voice commands, I'll show you, but first of all, before I show you that, I want to show you the, the, the DNLA function that works on the Xbox uh, One at the moment. Now, if I've got a video file here, which is just Braveheart, I'll right click that, and I know it's, I don't have a a capture card or anything like guys, you'll just have to do, make do with this silly iPhone I'm using. And you've got the Xbox One, it's also picking up my amp as well. You just click that and this box will jump up, let it do its thing. There are times where it doesn't work straight away, but 99% of times it does work. If it does fail on you, close it, open it up again, 
it's instantaneous. Um, this is only the temporary method via your laptop, but there is an app that's already out. It's a preview app for DNLA Media Center, which you will get an update in the next month or two, where you won't have to do that. It'll just, your Xbox One itself through that app, the Media Center app will actually just pick up all your files that you can just through the Xbox. Now this is playing my surround sound as well. I've just got it turned down low. You can control this now through the Xbox. I can control it from my laptop if I want, which you can see there's, you've got your pause, fast forward, rewind, stuff like that as well. You can do this with the Xbox. Xbox, pause. Xbox, pause. Sometimes it's a wee bit hard picking up a Scottish accent, but it, it works really well most of the time. Xbox, play. Very well. Don't have any issues with it. I can... Xbox, rewind. Play. And that's it. It, it works. It, it does work really well. I'm just going to close that. Uh, Ali, uh, Xbox, go home. Stop listening. So it, it works really well, the voice commands. There are some times where you have little issues, but other than that, not a big problem. Um, what else was I going to show you? Um, you get lost. This wasn't exactly 100% well planned. Sorry, guys. The apps that you get with the Xbox are always being updated. Um, you get a lot more apps. And that's pretty much all the apps that are available on the Xbox Store. Um, occasionally though when you do a system update, it doesn't individually update all your apps. Like the Blu-ray app sometimes needs an individual app update. Um, same with Skype and a couple of wee things like that. Other than that, it does everything. But having YouTube and is definitely a benefit. Xbox, go home. Stop listening. So, there you have it, the Xbox. Now, I know I've covered more of the Xbox. PlayStation, I feel, personally, doesn't have a lot to cover. It is great for games. It is great for games. I do have more games for the PlayStation. I do prefer playing single-player campaigns on the PlayStation. But if I'm playing uh, multimedia, music, um, you know, YouTube, Skype, surfing the web, or you're kind of, you know, even snapping a conversation in your middle of playing a game or watching a film, you can still contact people and talk to them. You can surf the web while doing those things. There's a lot of things you can multitask. And again, PlayStation 4 doesn't do this stuff. Um, playing games single player on Xbox, I can do. They work really well. I just think I prefer that slight graphic improvement on the PlayStation. Um, but if I was going to play a game online, I would play on Xbox Live because the Sony network's been hacked again recently. It's not a very great service um, for what I'm paying for, other than the fact you do get some free games every month. They're always saying they're good games, they're not rubbish games. Nothing, nothing. I don't think they're anything spectacular, but then would you expect for free? And Xbox One's kind of doing things like that now with the Xbox Gold, which you can see down there, where you can play games for free for a small, t a short period of time. There's a lot more free to play stuff on the Xbox, um, which, you know, like Killer Instinct. Um, so, yeah, if you're going to, I mean, like things like the common games like Alien Isolation and games like that, I'll, pl I'll play a lot of single player games on my PlayStation, but if I'm going to be social playing games online like Rainbow Six Siege, which I'm looking forward to, um, The Division, which again I think I'd rather see the graphics in the PlayStation, it's a it's an online game, so I'll probably end up finding, my, if my friends have got it, I'll play it on the Xbox. Games like the new Battlefield Hardline, if I ever decide to play Call of Duty again in the future, which is looking doubtful. You know, I can do all that on the Xbox One with my friends. I wouldn't really bother my time with PlayStation Network because it's it's not great. Um, 
Xbox, go to settings. I'm going to show you another thing. For those of you who have or are thinking of getting an AV receiver, they're very good. I'm not promoting these guys. I just absolutely love them because they do more than just giving you absolute amazing surround sound. They do a lot of things. But with, if you were to go to the PlayStation 4 setup for sound, it just lets you pick HDMI. Unlike the PlayStation 3, it doesn't let you individually check codecs like DTS, HD Master, Dolby Digital True HD, um, you know, PCM, uh, if it's 5.1 or 7.1, it doesn't let you pick that stuff, it just tells you it's HDMI. Now, don't get me wrong, you will get those codecs, it will play them, it actually communicates with your amp better by displaying the actual uh, codec on the amp, it seems to talk to it a wee bit better, but it's just it's nice that the Xbox have included things like unchecking or checking the loud 3D playback, blurry playback, playback, sorry, um, and it tells you there I can, I've got 7.1 uncompressed, bitstream out, DTS, it lets you even choose to set up your TV and your AV control, which means when you close down your Xbox One or start it up, if it's set up right, it will also turn off your TV and your AV receiver, as well as turning them on, um, nice wee features like that as well, you can choose the refresh rate, um, you can, you've got a lot of control here, um, calibrating your TV, auto detecting your TV, you can choose the resolution, um, you just can't seem to do any of that play, playful stuff with the PlayStation, um, there's not much really else I'm going to really need to cover, um, it's really down to your guys and what you think is best for you, if you've got a home entertainment system and you like watching movies, as well as playing games, surfing the web, YouTube and multimedia, like media player, um, chatting to your friends, socialising, um, I think the Xbox One's a better bet, it's a, it's a, a it, also the voice commands, it's pretty cool, let's be honest, you know, um, talking to people on Skype and having the freedom to walk around your room and still being able to be on camera, um, or using hand gestures if you're, you know, if you, because it also means if you're watching a movie and say your battery, because the Xbox pad after a, a isolation for a wee bit, it will switch itself off. It still means you can still can control your system without having to turn the thing on. If you're in the middle of a movie or you get really loud music on and your batteries have died, you can you can still control it by pausing it or turning it off or whatever without having to run around trying to find batteries in order to control it. Whereas the PlayStation 4, I'm constantly having to have a wire in the thing and charging it. Um, because the batteries die a lot. Once they die, you, can, you can't control that, that, that system at, at all until you plug it back in. But, um, I won't cover games as such because this is down to you guys what you prefer, but with regards to the consoles, I prefer my Xbox One. I started this off with hating Xbox, not wanting one, wasn't going to get one, PlayStation all the way, PlayStation 4 has let me down big style. Sony are not listening to their fans, they're not bringing out old tech onto the new tech like CDs, MP3s, DNLA, video playback, yeah. there's loads of things that the PlayStation 3 has. Your Xbox One will do everything because they're constantly updating it and they're constantly keeping you in the loop with sharing videos and posts and stuff saying this is what's coming next and a lot of it is quite exciting stuff. I have missed out a lot of stuff because Xbox and are very busy with a lot of new features still coming. I haven't mentioned them all but you guys can keep up to date with that. Sony, nobody knows. You go into their Twitter page, their, their website, you look at everything and you just see trolls and trolls of people asking, when are we getting this, when are we getting that? And there's never any news feed saying, this is upcoming. It doesn't even tell you when the next update's going to be and what's going to be in it. The Xbox tells you there's going to be an update in the next month. The next, Usually every month they get an update. And it's always, that's one of the things, about one, one of the things Microsoft is saying is every month you will get new features or content. And that's brilliant. So... I hope you've liked this review guys, if I've missed anything, or if there's anything at all that you've wanted to ask, you know, leave a comment, I'll, I'll answer it, um, ask me, 
and if you even need to see this I'll even upload a video and I'll show you the, the consoles doing what you've asked me to show um, obviously please like, favour and subscribe um, and I'll speak to you guys soon